I love CrossFit, but is it dying? Let's have a chat about it. What is up, you sexy beasts? I hope you guys are doing fantastic wherever you are in the world. Thank you for being here. Thank you for clicking through and giving me the time of day. My name is Vakey and we cover CrossFit, news, commentary, training, nutrition, lifestyle, family, traveling, athletes, all sorts of great stuff on this channel. So uh, if you are new here, we'd love for you to stick around, hit that subscribe button and join the tribe. And on that note, I think we're sitting at around 10,700 subscribers. We were, over, we were only, we only hit 10,000 on New Year's Day. So over the last two or three months, we have gained 700 new tribe members and that is no small thing. So welcome and thank you so much for joining the tribe to the new 700 tribe members that we've gained over the last three months. Today, let's talk about CrossFit. Is it dying? Is CrossFit dying? Is it on its way out? You know, is she going this way? Is Not she. He or she, it's a company, it's got no gender. Is it, is CrossFit going this way or that way? Let's look at the numbers. So you can measure, I guess, CrossFit's success and growth uh, in multiple different ways, but two of the main ways is, number one, the affiliates. Are the affiliates worldwide, are they growing? And then when you look at the sport of CrossFit, is the participation in the open going up or going down? So let's have a look at the affiliates to start with. I remember back in 2018, 2019, when I still had my CrossFit gyms, the number 15,000 was kind of thrown out there loosely as the amount of affiliates worldwide. Um, the reality is that as far as paying, paying affiliates, the highest number that CrossFit's ever been at is 11,700. That's the biggest number that they have sat at. And then there's roughly 2,000 non-paying affiliates um, within schools and within prisons and facilities like that. So I guess if you take those 2,000 into account, plus the 11,700, what's that? 13,700, so around that 14,000 mark. So I guess that's where that 15,000 round number got thrown around it. It is no secret that 2019, 2020 were pretty rocky years for CrossFit, both on the affiliate level and also on the sport level. You know, CrossFit got rid of their media team uh, pretty much in its entire, entirety, uh, deleted its Instagram, its Facebook accounts, and there were a lot of uncertainty around, you know, what was happening with the games in 2019. And in many ways, 2018 was kind of like seen as the pinnacle year for CrossFit, the best, you know, the good old days. Um, it was an incredible uh, year of the games. Uh, the affiliation was at its all-time high, and so was the open participation. And then came along 2019, 2020, with the whole Greg Glassman saga, the company selling, and things weren't looking great for CrossFit. And we did see a downturn in numbers on all fronts, starting with the affiliate numbers at the start of 2021, that number of 11,700 paying affiliates, which was the all-time high, that number had dropped to 9,400. So that's about a decrease in affiliation of 2,300 gyms. That's a lot. Now, by the end of that year, 2021, CrossFit reported paying affiliate numbers of 10,800. So that means throughout 2021, they gained 1,400 gyms back, you know, either gyms that de-affiliated and then re-affiliated, uh, or new gyms that have started up. So that is great news that last year, we saw an increase in affiliation by 1,400 gyms. And then if you add the 1,800 non-paying affiliates, that's gonna bring it up to around 12,800. So the numbers aren't that far off what they once were at their peak. So on the affiliate front, we're roughly a thousand gyms shy of the all-time high of 11,700 paying affiliates. So that's positive news on the affiliate front, see that trending upwards again. Now let's have a look at the open participation, which I guess is another metric that just shows how interested the community is and actually taking part in the sport of CrossFit. These numbers were put out by the Morning Chalk Up in a recent article, so thank you guys for the awesome work you do and reporting these numbers for us. Uh, as you guys can see there in 2018, we were at the pinnacle, 416,000 participants. And uh, then you see the decrease to 300,050 in 2019, and then a massive drop in 2020 uh, to 239,000. So since then, we have seen an increase. So both 2021 and 2022, we have seen uh, you know 10 to 11% increases. 
um, again, which is great news. It's not anywhere near where we used to be, but at least it's trending in the right direction. And then staying on the topic of the sport of CrossFit, just last week, uh, the CrossFit Games announced their increased price purse for the CrossFit Games. And there's some really positive stuff in here. They're now gonna be paying out not only the top 20 individual athletes, but all 40 athletes will receive something. Again, from the morning talk up, it says here that the total purse will be a minimum of 2,689,000. And that does not include the first, second, and third place finishes uh, per workout of the games. So CrossFit estimates that the purse will top 2.845 million in prize money, which is around 300,000 more than last year. So let's have a quick look at the individual payouts. It is close to 2 million there for the individuals. First place on both male and female side will take 310,000. That is some decent cash. Second place, 120, and third place, 80. And then you can see there, fourth through the 20. So even if you come 20th of the games, you're gonna receive $8,000. If you come 40th of the games, you're gonna receive $2,250. So it's great to see that all athletes now are gonna be paid out, I think that is only right. And then uh, looking at the teams, it's significantly less, um, but the first place finisher there, the team will get 100,000, second place 70,000, and third place 40,000. For the teams, they used to just pay first through the fifth place, they're now paying out all the way to 10th place on the team front. I don't believe much has changed for the Masters athletes payouts, um, and same for the adaptive athletes. I think those price purses are staying very similar to last year. And then the only division that does not get payouts is the team divisions. So I guess if you look at all these numbers, you know, the affiliation numbers are up. Sure, they're not quite where they used to be, but they're definitely on the way up. And I think gaining 1,400 affiliates over the last year, that's pretty solid going. And if they can do that again this following year, that'll get us pretty close to where we used to be. Um, as far as the open participation goes, you know, we're way off our 2018 high of 400,000, um, but we have seen you know, about a 10 to 11% increase over the last couple of years. And I think if next year is trending in the same direction, um, I'd be confidently saying that CrossFit is on the way back up and growing again, um, and it's not dying. And then obviously seeing the price purses go up for the athletes, it's another positive. So my question to you is how, talking specifically about the sport of CrossFit and open participation, since when the open kind of season has just finished, but um, what do you think CrossFit can do to increase open participation? How do we get more people to take part in the CrossFit Open? Um, my idea, and I think, you know, the thing that stands between a participant and, you know, taking part, you know, someone giving their money to CrossFit to take part in the Open, to me, the major player in the middle there is the coach, the CrossFit coach, you know. They are the one that will motivate and encourage their members to join up for the Open. And currently, there is just zero... Um, incentive for a coach to encourage you know their members to sign up I mean CrossFit coaches are pretty self-motivated people they don't necessarily need incentives to perform and do a great job but how cool would it be if CrossFit incentivized whether that's financial or in some way incentivized the coaches to encourage participation in the open or reward them for signups I know that CrossFit has a leaderboard for the most members signed up for any one affiliate I'm not sure if there's a financial reward for those affiliates obviously there was that affiliate in North America who had the most signups who I guess were rewarded by hosting the last open workout but yeah I think I would like to see more incentive for either the CrossFit box owner or actually more so the coach more incentive for the coach to uh, to help members get across the line and sign up for the open. One thing that CrossFit has just introduced that I do think is gonna help is the levels system. It's essentially like a golf handicap. If you enter all your results for the CrossFit Open for that particular year, starting from this year, 2022, CrossFit's gonna give you a level or a, uh, a ranking, I guess. And this is gonna do two things. If you've ever been to a local CrossFit competition, you would have seen someone entering the scale division or the intermediate division that are just way too advanced for that division. You often see that some RX level athlete enters the scale and wins it, and it's just not fair, you know? So I think this is gonna be a great thing for local competitions to take advantage of and use the levels that CrossFit will provide people that do the Open to then sort out how people enter their competition. So for those who like to compete on a local level, this is gonna encourage them to do the Open and to log their results to get the yearly level. But the other layer that's perhaps more important is that everyone that takes part in the Open now 
Not only will they wait for a repeat workout to test their fitness and see how they've improved, they can literally see their level improving from year to year. So I'm not sure what these levels are gonna look like. Apparently they're supposed to be up already, but I looked on my profile and I couldn't see any levels next to my name on the games, uh, on my games profile. But essentially if I'm a level 10 this year, next year I do the, uh, do the open and after the results come out, I'm now a level eight and I've moved up two levels. That to me is a really great way to measure how you're going in your fitness. And so um, I think that's gonna be a great thing introducing these levels, but you guys are smart. You're a smart bunch out there. So if you have any ideas, you never know. Someone at CrossFit might just watch this video, read the comments, and your idea might be the next revolutionary idea for CrossFit to move ahead. So please get involved down in the comments. Let me know if you have any great ideas on how CrossFit can increase participation in the Open. And if you have any thoughts on the price purse of the CrossFit Games this year, um, and also the affiliate numbers, let me know. I'd love to hear those. Like my tribe, stay sexy, keep roaring love. I'm going to see you tomorrow. Mwah.